Fiction to the grave, he was laid out. But after three days in that garden tomb, you could hear the angels sing as a lamb came forth as a lion, and the lion became the king. You won't find him again at that whipping post, standing there so mean. Oh, and he won't be nailed. To the rugged cross by his hands and his feet There'll never be another Calvary Cause you only have to do one thing Oh, it was a day the lamb He became the lion and the lion became the king Now Jesus left the splendor To live on earth with man by most he was rejected because he came forth as a lamb. But the day is soon approaching that every eye shall see the lamb, the lion of Judah, has been crowned the king of kings. Yeah, you won't find him again at that whipping post, standing there so mean. Oh, it won't be nailed to the rugged cross by his hands and his feet. There'll never be another Calvary, cause you only have to do one thing. Oh, it was a day the lamb, he became the lion, and the lion became the king. Oh, it was a day the lamb, he became the lion, and the lion. He became the king. Mama taught me how to give. Mama taught me how to live. Mama taught me how to read the word of God. We have to do is pray, and your life will be led by the star. That star is Jesus Christ, who came to give his life on Calvary's cross. Christ was paid in full. If you will believe, then you will receive. Eternal life and all it ensues. Mama said to read the word. It's the voice of God. You heard. It's the power of God to all who believe. It's peace to the troubled soul. It's 
God's hidden gold is Moses' rod to all who achieve. The city's coming soon, could be morning, night, or noon. Pays to have your name in the book of life. You may be the upper class, you may be running fast, or you may be the world's biggest crew. That star is Jesus Christ, who came to give his life on Calvary's cross. Christ was paid in full. If you will believe, then you will receive. Eternal life and all it ensures. i 
till my dying day help others find the way I'm at your mercy please forgive me I need your grace to make it through all I have is you I'm at your mercy
shall be T-shirt would have felt a little better this morning too, but thank the Lord for it. Thank the Lord we here are able to uh, gather together and worship Him. Uh, like a welcome home. Uh, uh, well, the visitors now, but the one that's been off without like welcoming them home. Charles is home back with his mama today. Uh, probably some more. Don't want to overlook anybody. We welcome everybody. Yeah, yeah, I know. I asked Bradley; he knew who that visitor was. So, uh, send him back. Thank the Lord. Everybody, glad to see everybody. Uh, Lord, you receive a blessing for being in the Lord's house. Uh, Terry, Steely, how about opening up in prayer? Got a card I need to read first off this morning. Got some pretty flowers and butterflies on it, if y'all can see that far. <clears throat> Says your kindness made, made a difference. And your thoughtfulness touched my heart. Thank you. Says thank you for all the prayers, calls, texts, and love offering. We can't express how much it has meant to us. Love, Kurt and Amanda White. So Church helped them out in time of need. Me thanking us for it. On a calendar. Church trip to Papa Farm to the pumpkin patch, the one that's got tickets to go after church. As soon as church is over, go to the social hall. You get your ticket, eat, and y'all leave. Lady Quilton on 18th, youth committee on the 27th. 5.30, retired educator is going to be, uh, and a veteran is going to be uh, recognized on November 7th, and we'll have our Thanksgiving lunch that day at lunch time. Actually, Veteran Day is November 11th, but we're going to celebrate it on the 7th, give thanks to our veterans. Some gave all, 
all gave some that went and fought for our, our freedom that we have and uh, not to be taken lightly. Well, we all know some that didn't come back. So we thank the Lord for forgiving. But you know, we soldiers of God, so we, we got to be soldiers in his army marching for him. So pray that he'll give us the, the desire to do the things for him that we need to do. Church conference, a regular conference is November the 14th, but we are going to have a call conference tonight for talking about repairing our building. You can see the dirt out there. We were trying to fix one problem, and it turned into some major problems. So we're going to have a conference tonight to bring those before the church. So pray that the Lord give us the right answer. If anyone would like for your children to be in the Christmas program, please be sure they are in the children's church during the month of October and November. They will be practicing for a portion of each children's church service. They'll be practicing, so they need to be here. It's important for them to be at the practice. We got anyone would like to be a messenger? We got. Ten signed up. We got one. We got to get signed up. We have eleven. We can have up to fifteen. If anyone would like to go represent the church, go attend all the meetings and vote for what God's word says. Let me know. Let's see what we can do. Uh, that's all I know this morning, other than just Lord good. We've had no, I'd like, like to tell you a little more. Went on around here. You ladies know it. The ladies' classroom had termites in it. Had to have that wall, to one wall tore out and repaired. It's done. Looks real good to me. This one has been leaking a good while. It's been fixed. Same people fixed it. Looked good. Paint matches good. And, uh, anyhow, thank the Lord for sending them along at the right time. So, uh, anyhow, so thank you all for being here. Remember, be in prayer about what's going on. Thank you. Well, good morning. Just to re add back to some what he said a while ago, uh, Sister Karen Gillis, as me and Brother Charlie knows her as Sarge, she says, if you're going, make sure you go. They're cooking food for you over there, and it's going to be steak, ground steak. And I heard French fries and many, many more. So don't disappoint them. Y'all know what happens to the excess food, don't you? The preacher has to carry it home with him. And I don't need it. But uh, it's good to be with you this morning. Stand with us. We're going to sing a few songs this morning. We're going to sing, When Morning Comes.
all those that would like to, go out and uh, welcome someone. Tell them you love them in the name of Jesus. If you don't want to, just stay where you're at. Play something, brother, uh, sister. so long I didn't tell y'all that this was a family reunion Ronnie would you turn around and lead those ladies along <laughs> every Sunday morning there's always pretty little girls and pretty women going into the office to give him something I asked him I said what is the deal brother Ronnie he said charisma <laughs> apparently you cannot see charisma but anyway, he's got whatever it is. All right, page 537, I will sing the wonder story. This will be our offertory hymn. I will sing.
just a country boy I never had much money And I never knew the word luxury But in heaven I know I'll have a mansion And no streets of gold were paved just for me It won't be long till Jesus comes Well, I've never been to heaven but I know I'll feel at home It won't be long Till Jesus comes Well, I'm on my way to heaven And I know it won't be long Well, if the Lord should come today I'd go and meet him But the sinners left behind Would start to pray Well, they'd be praying for the rocks Fall upon them And they'd weep and pray But it would be too late It belong till Jesus comes Well I've never been to heaven but I know I'll feel at home Well I belong till Jesus comes well, I'm on my way to heaven and I know it won't be long. Stand with me if you will. We're going to sing one more. Nice. Enough to sing it just before we get into the word. So I pray that you'll do what it says. Open my eyes, Lord. Inviting the Holy Spirit to come and be in our midst this morning. So sing this with me. Open my eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. To reach out and touch him. And say that we love him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Remain standing for a moment, Father, as we enter into the worship service. God, even before we read thy scripture, Lord, we beg for the presence of the Holy Spirit of God, which we do feel. 
And God, I pray, Lord, that what's said this morning, Lord, would just come into our heart and soothe us, instruct us, Lord. Let us know that we're protected by the very presence of Almighty God. God, we just pray now that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. When you sit down there, you can open your Bibles to Romans chapter 1. We had a study of sometimes if you miss on Wednesday night, um, you may miss a real meaty part of some scripture. And when I got said and done, and while I was saying and doing, uh, son, uh, Wednesday night, we had some that said, I said, I sure wished I could have saved that for Sunday morning. And uh, so more people could have heard it. I don't know how many heard it out on Facebook, but how many actually could hear it. And I had several to say, well, preach it again. Well, I wasn't going to do that, but I am now. Uh, it's not going to be the same thing. It's going to actually lead. I think we need it to lead us from here to chapter 2, that I, we'll all be on the same page. So we, we may scurry through where I want to start right now, but not leaving. And I don't know, just however the Spirit leads us is what we're going to do. So if you found Romans 1, stand with me. I want to look, begin reading in verse 18. I got a title this morning, and I had to dig it up on the Internet to remember what the song is. And Brother Terry may even have this song on there. But there's a song that's written, in, 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 and I don't know if this is the proper name for it, but this is part, the last words of the, of the course. It says, uh, it's, it, it begins out saying preacher and all like that. But anyway, this is the last word. It says, don't tell me like I wish it was. Tell it like it is. The Apostle Paul tells it like it is. Verse 18, he says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest or made known in them or to them for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are, known, are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Father, today, God, let us see we will be without excuse when we stand before the Holy One. God, we, we know you know all things, and God, you reveal yourself to us in so many ways. We know that thou art God. Whether some profess that or not, Father, God, we want to tell it just like it is. God, you are him. You are the Savior. You are God Almighty, the Creator. God, have your will and way in this service. Lord, let the Spirit fill our hearts and our minds. And all God's people said, Amen. I do like to reread verse 18 uh, it seems like you could just keep doing this over and over again. I may could preach five messages in a row on the same scriptures. It's just how God could reveal things to you. But I, no I notice in verse 18 it says, For the wrath of God is revealed um, from heaven against all ungodliness. Listen, uh, every, some want to preach that God is so much of God of love. And he is. He loved us so much. He sent his son to die for you. You didn't ask him to. He did it because he knew how you were going to be. He, he, he did that. He loved us. It says, but in the very, it says, from the wrath of God, for the wrath of God is revealed unto heaven against all ungodliness. Do you understand that? Ungodliness is going to face the wrath of Almighty God. If God could be so great and so good, he can be also so awesome and he can be also so terrible in his wrath. Uh, we don't hear much about the raft of God preached anymore. Uh, you know, when you turn on the TV, just a few guys here and there that talks about it. But there is a payday someday, and it's coming. And the Lord Jesus Christ, in all of his glory, when he comes back, he's going to show the devil who is boss and all the ungodly. Notice what it says there. And also that the unrighteous of men who hold the truth or hold back the truth uh, in unrighteousness. So he's kind of picking on both sides here. Unrighteous people, un, un, uh, uh, people that are um, 
lost my train of thought. Uh, unrighteous and ungodly people, he's talking about them. But then he says, for those that know the truth and hold back the truth, knowing to tell and preach different or teach different, he says, they're also uh, subject to the wraft of God. Do you understand that? Now, I'm going to be honest. I don't want to fall in that category. I'd rather tell it like it is. If y'all don't know that song, we'll... We'll, we'll get Brother Terry maybe to play it one day or something like that. But it's it really got something. This guy's talking in, 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 uh, in the song. He's got a message. And he says, don't tell me like I, like I wish it was. You know, I'm thinking that's a lot of what's going on in some places. You know, I hate to be that way. But uh, some of the most favorite popular places used to be when people was getting saved. And now it's when... They got all this stuff going on in the world. I hope they're getting the true meaning of the word. I hope they're getting uh, everything like they are. If they're getting it told like it is, then praise the Lord for it. That's what they need. You need the truth. And the Bible says about the truth that the truth shall set you free. And he that is free is free indeed. So you need the truth. And I want to tell you the truth. And, and Paul is telling the truth in the Word of God this morning. And it, it, I mean, he gets pretty specific uh, on down. And we'll try to get through that and uh, just uh, blot your tongue and hang on. And it says in verse 19, he says, Because that which was being known of God is manifest or made known to them, uh, for God have showed it unto them. And it goes on to say in the next few verses there how that God reveals himself to people. Even nature itself, we know that. That teaches you that there is a God. God can you can hear people that uh, that's supposed to die and don't die. You can hear people that has a sickness unto death and suddenly, uh, in a miraculous and a miracle way of God, that they come back. I, I love to hear the testimonies when a doctor comes in there and tells the family, says, "Hey, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. We saw this, you know, a long ago. We prepared this a long ago, and uh, he says there's really no uh, uh, rhyme or reason scientifically or in." medical reasons why this thing should not be here, but it has to be a miracle from God. Life is a miracle from God. If you want to just go ahead and say, well, this medicine did this and this medicine did that. Listen, God is the only one that can bless medicine. God is the only one that can do this. He can also just make it disappear on its own. It's only He can do those things. I'm here this morning to give Him credit where credit is due. I mean, he is an awesome God. All gifts and perfect gifts come from the Lord. And I'm not talking about Christmas gifts. I'm talking about the gifts of uh, mercy and, and grace and healing power and uh, uh, the very presence of giving us the Holy Spirit to live in our life. I don't care how you live by yourself or not. You're never alone when you have the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I know uh, Emerson, the kids, was with us yesterday, and, and Caleb was trying to take a nap. He done got so tired of hunting, you know. I think he fell asleep, asleep in a tree stand. But anyway, he got in there. We eat a little bit. He went, and, and Emerson was playing over there at the dollhouses, and it was quiet in there except for her. She was just talking. I mean, she was just a talking. You know, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, uh, we could do that to God. Because when Caleb says, who are you talking to, Emerson? She said, Myself. Well, let me tell you, if somebody slips up to your house one day and you're just walking around cleaning or doing whatever you're doing in the yard, pulling weeds or whatever you're doing out there, and you're talking to yourself next time when somebody says, who in the world are you talking to? He said, I'm talking to the Lord. I'm talking to the Lord. Well, I don't see him. Well, I, well, he's here. I can tell you he's here. He's ever present. He's always going to be there. But he says he makes himself known unto people. Not by just a preacher. You can do without having a preacher or a Sunday school teacher or a witness or anything like that. Nature itself lets you know that there is what some of the world want to call a supreme being. I'd rather prefer to him as God Almighty, okay? He is the creator of the world. Now, now I want to skip on down. I prepared you for what's fixing to happen enough that I want you to go come on down there. It talks about all the uh, incorruptible and the corruptible corruptible things there and it also tells us that when we stand before him we will be without excuse you know there's a lot of reasons why if you ever tried to work anybody nowadays you'll hear more excuses than you could imagine uh why they didn't come or why they're doing this and why they're just sorry and around why they're doing all these things but let me tell you there's 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 two different things we talk about is it an excuse or is it a reason 
Well, let me tell you, neither one of them is going to stand before the Lord. The reason that you're going to hell is because you never accepted Christ. The reason that you are going to heaven is because you did accept Christ. And there's nothing in between which you and I will try to make up along this line. Uh, An excuse definition is a thin skin of a lie. If it's, not a, if it's not a reason and you make it an excuse, it's pretty close. You're going to tell a fib if you're not careful. But verse 24, he says, Wherefore, God has also gave them up, talking about the ungodly, he says, and uh, uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their bodies between themselves. I want you to understand, we're fixing to approach some stuff right here that really, that really sets into um, hometown. I mean, uh, it's not... It was so uncommon to even hear uh, this kind of language and this kind of uh, sexual behavior uh, on TV. But now they make cartoons. They make uh, uh, soap operas. They make all kind of things where like sexes are marrying and having families and all like that. And that's strictly from the pits of hell. That is not what the Lord ordained to happen. And no, it should not be a part of the social list that we have in the United States of America as a a people group. There are only two people groups. There's lost and there's born again. I mean, there's lost and there's and there's saved people, born again folks. That's only two. That's only two. You know, I, I didn't say Democrat or Republican. I didn't say that. There's lost and then there's born again people. That's it. Two people groups. We need to work on that other people group. If you're born again, we we're out to seek and to save and help lead them to Jesus so he can save their soul. So. We, through this, it says, he says, through their own lust, he says, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. It says this, that these people did this. He says, who changed the truth of God into a lie. Did you know if, you, if I were uh, to change the word of God and not tell you like it, like it is, uh, maybe like you would like to hear it, maybe the preacher would say, well, you know, uh, uh, you know, I hate to say these things, folks. I, I really do. But I, I got to tell you the truth. You know, the Bible even talks about divorce. You know, I don't hate you if you've been divorced. You know, I, I, I don't. I, I don't. I, I mean, I love you. I, I really do. But it says God once winked at sin and he allowed uh, Moses to write a bill of divorcement. But ultimately, even in the marriage vows, it is for, uh, for the lifetime. And I know it don't work out. I know it don't work out and all like that. But listen, as you know, if you are one of them, there are come some luggage would be in mark by that not by God not by anybody you're not going to hell on account of it do you understand God can use you he, he wants to use you even in these cases but there's certain things that you cannot do that one that has not done that before there's certain things that you cannot do, and that's okay. We're not talking about you're being ungodly, you're going against the grain. I'm not talking about that. What we're talking about here is what people has done to the natural body and the desires of the body and switched it around, made the truths of God to be a lie. When you change the truths of God, you have called him a liar. It says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. So you know it's him. He says, and to dishonor their own own bodies between them who changed the truth into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever amen let me tell you we was made and built to serve God almighty created in him we are the glory of God do you hear me we are the glory of God Listen, the hair of a lady is the glory of the woman for her husband and of the Lord. It's not, I'm not telling you it's got to be long. I'm not telling you you can't color it. I'm just, at least fix it, okay? Just fix it. That's all we add. Just fix it. And I think the girls and the boy, uh, the girls need to look like girls and the boys need to look like boys. And if we ain't careful and we entertain uh, this, this lifestyle into our homes, then one day it may pop up and see, I'm not exempt from that. I'm not exempt. You're not exempt for stuff like that popping up into your families. And let me tell you, you need to be strong. You, do, you don't need to hate nobody. You can love them all the same. But your, your testimony needs to be saying, God ain't pleased with that. God ain't pleased with it. Hey, I got some cousins and all that I growed up with over the years. And, uh, you know, uh, the girls like other girls. 
or women like other women. Hey, I'm just telling you, uh, I, I still talk with them whenever I see them. I ain't seen them in years, but whenever I see them. But let me tell you, they never bring it up because they know who I am. They know who I serve because they in their own hearts know it's a sin against God. I'm telling you, it's, the world's trying to make it where it should be just open and easy to talk about, and we're supposed to accept it. Well, if God won't accept it, neither should we. Because if we condone it, we go along with it, then we're saying yes to that. Man, that's tough, but it's the truth. I know that ain't what you wanted to hear, but I'm telling you, it's what you need to hear. And the world needs to hear it. I'm not just saying it to you guys. I'm saying it to whoever's listening. I'm just telling you what the Word of God said. And Paul had to say, he said, you believe that what we're going through in America today, they were going through it back in the the book of Acts and now in the book of Romans when Paul was converted and now he's on fire for the Lord and this was going on. It was in the Roman Empire. Man, they done it in the church houses. Do you hear me? They practiced illicit sex in the temples. We're not careful. It can happen in our day, not under my watch, but in this day and time in which we live. I would remove myself from such situations if I couldn't prevent it from happening. And it says this, it says, For this cause God gave them up to, to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that uh, which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. Let me tell you, I'm so excited. You know, between now and the first year, I'm going to marry three couples. One homosexual group and two. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Three people. I'm excited. I'm excited about that. I don't care what about that. Hey, I'd rather them get married. It said, the Bible says it's better to marry than to burn, okay? Let's get married. And the Bible also says a man that findeth a wife, I would say a good wife, findeth a good thing. A woman findeth a good man, findeth a good thing. And I hope it works out for all of them. But let me tell you, it is lawful. It is godly to marry and to work together as one for one purpose, that you keep Jesus Christ in your heart and your soul. To to work together, let me tell you, if that thing is not equally yoked at that part of the time, by the way, this is part of y'all's counsel. Anyway, who's listening? But anyway, uh, if you're unequally yoked from the get-go, let me tell you, you will not change that person. The devil will fight you all the way. Be, be, Be born again together. Know Jesus Christ together, and things will work out. And don't allow this nonsense that we're talking about this morning to creep into your heart. Men with men, women with women are all the above and everything else that could happen possibly in there. He says, God turned them over to a vile and reprobate mind. In verse 27, it says, Likewise, the men leaving their natural use of the woman to burn lust one toward another. Verse 28, he says, And even as they did like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. I'm going to tell you, I found more out studying the second time than I did the first time. And let me tell you what the Word of God is saying here. There's people that have the knowledge of God who who still allows this stuff and maybe participates. If you allow it, you're almost like participating with such foolishness. That's what it's saying. You say, well, I can't help what people do. Well, hey, let me tell you, if you're financing it, cut the finances off. If you, you, know, you can always go by and love and say, hey, I'm praying for you. I want God to change your hearts and your minds. Y'all could just stop all this foolishness. It ain't just homosexuality. It's... It's, it's fornication. It's, it's all the things in there. But this particular one sums it out. Could you believe that they was, I don't believe they called it LGBTQ way back in the day, but they called it something. God calls it sin. You can name it what you want to, but if it's not with God, it's sin. That's what they call it. He says, being filled, uh, he said, with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, all these things listed. He says, uh, malicious, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters. Let me tell you, all these things that are going through there has nothing to do with homosexuality, but it's treated in the eyes of God the same as. 
Man, you can agree with me about homosexuality, but can you agree with me about all the rest of them? Are we guilty of some of the rest of these? I'm, I'm telling you, we have to be careful. I may be also guilty. I need to ask God to forgive me, whether I say it or do it, but have it in my mind, I am guilty as charged. Notice what it says here. He says, uh, proud boasters, inventors of evil things. Anybody ever invented anything evil? Yeah. You have in your mind. You may have not have put it to use. There's a lot of evil things out there. I can tell you, just go back to the church once upon a time, way back when they called it high places. You know what they did? They, 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 they drew out images of wood and they had it there in the high places which where they used to go sacrifice. And they did it in high places. You could see it as you went into a place where, where the priest would offer sacrifices in high places. You know, someone coming into town, they said, well, there's a, a, a religious place up there. We'll go to high places and do those things. They turned in and made a mockery unto God. And boy, when God told them to destroy it, he didn't mean for them to just go through there and sweep the floor. He meant to cut the trees down for it will be no more. You know, one time they decided they'd leave all the trees and leave all the monuments and all that, and God was so displeased with that. When he got through with that place, he burned everything that was there by the help of some of the followers and some of the believers. He says in verse 31, he says, without understanding, convenient breakers. He says, without natural affection, Implicable, he says, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they may which commit such things are worthy of death. Don't we want to go back to the old school? Notice how the laws have changed over there. The Bible says that if we do all these things, and we might be one of them, us uh, doing some of this stuff, he says this is worthy of the death. Because we only want to pick out one or two of them that we don't do to say amen to, right? Well, it's the whole list. It's the whole list. I mean, you want it like it is, that's how it is. Are we guilty? Yes, we're guilty. We're not guilty. The Bible says you're guilty of one, you're guilty of the whole thing. The whole thing. We need to be careful. We're not here trying to judge. That's what they're trying to do. That's what it's going to talk about in chapter 2, how about judging these kind of people and those things because you better be careful about doing that. He says, who knowing the judgment of God that they may commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. We come, we're guilty, we're guilty. Now let's hurry up. I can start my message in chapter 2 right now, but I won't. But I am going to start part of it anyway. I don't want to scare you. The hamburgers will be ready. Don't worry, they ain't going nowhere. They'll put them in the warmer. We'll be over there in a minute. He says, therefore, thou art inexcusable. Did you see that? The root word of that is the word excuse that we talked about earlier. You got reasons for things, and then you make them an excuse, which is a thin skin of a lie. He says, for these things right here, they're in it. Are they unforgivable? No. They are forgivable. There's nothing that God cannot forget but you denying that He is the Savior of the world. That's the only thing He cannot. He says, So don't worry about what you have done. Listen, Jesus don't care about your past right now. He's worrying about your future. The, the, the past can be wiped away through the blood of Jesus as we speak. When He forgives you, your slate is clean. In spite of what man's records may show, the records in the kingdom of glory up there shows that you are accepted, you are adopted, you are a child of the king you have a key that allows you to get into the kingdom of heaven and that key's name is Jesus Christ our Savior he says therefore all thou art unexcusable O man whosoever thou art that judges he says for wherein thou judgest another thou condemnest thyself for, thy, for thou that judgest does the same things man it's amazing how you can say that you know why? Because he was one of them. You know when he was Saul, he was a religious guy. He was doing it in the name of religion but not in the love of Jesus. And Jesus said, if he would do that for me, I could make something out of him. And he struck him blind there on the road to Damascus and made a change in him. He saw the light. Praise God, he saw the light. Now, he really saw the light. Who did he see? The light? You know, let's talk about that in just a minute. He saw the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He saw him that day and made a change. Not only did he become a disciple, he became an apostle of Jesus Christ. He come one that writes about 14 books out of, out of these books that we have in the New Testament. He wrote over half of them. And I got to tell you, God anointed this man to do those things. And he said, well, he's pretty harsh. You know, some people don't like to preach or teach on these things. Hey, some of them's pretty tough. 
pretty tough. Listen, I don't answer to a board. Thank God. I only answer to King Jesus, and he sits on a throne, not on a board. You understand me? And I thank God for that, and I have the liberty, thank God for a church that allows me to preach what thus saith the word of God. The real word of God, not one that's been changed, not one that's been watered down, the one that calls it just like it is, and that's what we need. You want a change in your heart, you want to make sure that you're going to heaven, you believe what thus saith the word of God, not even me. I want you to follow uh, the word of God along with me every time. He says in verse 2, he says, But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to the truth against them which commit such things. What what does that mean? Well, if we're not careful, it says if we judge them things, we'll be judging our own selves because we're doing some of the same things in that whole list that was mentioned. He says, but if God judges you, let me tell you, it's the truth. What does that mean? If God is the truth in life and God is doing that, it is fair. And we will be without excuse even though we said, well, we thought it was all right. No, there's no way you knew it was all right. You ever done anything? You know, I am, you know, used to. It was just something that i seen other people do, my mom do, y'all may do, and all like that. Go along there in the grocery store. Boy, them grapes are pretty. I want them too good. I don't know. Let's see. No, nah, them ain't too good. I'm going to go. Whoa, them look good. Let me try them. I ain't sure. Let me try them. No, nah, them ain't good. And you go on. Listen, that ain't, that, that ain't the right way to do things. You say, well, you got to drive it before you know whether it's good or not. Well, I can tell you this right now. You stole something that wasn't yours. Even that little thing right there is the same. I, I ain't going to ask who's done that. Because, hey, I was guilty as a child. Man, I stole some Brazil nuts and I thought I was going to jail. I don't even know if I was in the first grade. I'd have rather went to jail than to face the wrath of my daddy when I got home. Mama just made me feel even worse than that when I had to give them back to the manager. He didn't want them. I'd beat to death with a hammer, but he took back the ones that I hadn't. But anyway, it says in verse 3, he says, And thinking thou this, O man, that thou judgest them which do such things, doest the same. He says that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. He says, let me tell you, just because you show up on church on Sunday morning, your name's on the Sunday school roll, and you say the prayer and you take up the offering and you teach Sunday school, that you're exempt from this thing, I'm telling you. He says, we are exactly held accountable for the very same things of a lost person if we have sin in our life. The same thing. So, oh, Brother Jamie, uh, I didn't say it. I didn't write it. Here it is. Read it for yourself. But that's what it means. That's what it says. So that's what it is. That's what it is. He says, Or despisest thou the riches of the goodness and the forbearance and the longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. (laughs) You know, think about what we're giving you this morning. We're giving you the Word of God. What does the Word of God do? All those things that it just said. He says, you think this is bad. He says, but he's offering you the truth and a way to... Let me tell you, if, if, if we had to make a decision, you know, after a while, just a little while, well, whenever God gets through with me and y'all choke a hamburger down, y'all going to go to the pumpkin patch or wherever y'all going. You, you think about it, that's all good. But if, if I was to tell you, and you believe me beyond a shadow of a doubt, that as soon as the last chord on that piano that Sister Boog hit on, at the invitation time and it was over, that we was leaving here and going to whether we're heaven or hell, I bet you the altar would be full. You'd be prolonging this thing uh, going on and on. I'd be down there with you making sure that I am clean, that I am sure and all that. But I know beyond a shadow of a doubt if he was to call me unexpected, and he will because the Bible said when he returns he's going to come like a thief in the night you're not going to know when he's coming but I can tell you looking at that right now if we were to have sincereness about that maybe we could run it into paper maybe we could tell everybody uh, Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock King Jesus is coming in the clouds and if you're not ready to meet him I bet you Wednesday night we'd have a packed house that ain't all we'd have to change the water because of baptizing everybody wanting to do everything just right for to make sure that they would be without excuse without sin when they face King Jesus there when they stand before him or when the trumpet sounds that they would not stay here but they would go be with him. But let me tell you, we're not secure to know that it could not happen right as we speak today or it happened by next Friday or whenever it may happen. It's going to happen. Are you ready? Are you ready? You know, we get old and, you know, I get to look at me and I feel 58 and some of y'all tell me, oh, you're still a baby. Well, No, Zach's still a baby. 
I would, how old are you? Oh, I wish I was 27. I wish I had called to the ministry at 27. Whew. Man, you talking about the devil having some on his hand. I'd had the power to box him all night. But listen, it could happen any moment. It could happen any moment. He says, the very ones that defile that, the very ones that disagree with it, let me tell you. He said, I'm telling you, you save people. I'm telling you, you lost people. He says, you're going to stand before him, and you're going to be without excuse. You know, it's going to be an embarrassing moment. I think that's why everybody's going to be laying flat on their face when they're turned and when they stand before King Jesus because we're ashamed of the things that we have done while we claim to be. His people. We are His people. God's people's always sin and come short of the glory of God. But thanks be that God, He forgives us and He is faithful to give us up all of our sins and all of our unrighteousness. But the common practice of it is what He does not like. We're going to act on, just by accident, you're going to think a bad thought. By accident, you're going to do the wrong thing. You ever done the right thing and it wound up being wrong? If you hadn't, you're not married. You can try to do good, and it might not be the absolute opposite of what she wanted. Absolute opposite of what she wanted. I buy my wife something for her birthday. She said, no, you shouldn't have done that. Thank you. <laughs> well, was it good or was it bad? Or I don't know. Just a few more. By doing those things, the, the, the way he described it, he says, despising the riches. Listen, if you choose sin over God's work, then you despise all the things he offers to being a child of God, the riches and mercy. and You know, Jesus Christ, there's, there's no way to measure his wealth. There's no way you can outgive him. There's no way you can compare. The richest man in the world, which I don't know who he is, but I can tell you this, if he don't know Jesus, he is the poorest guy you've ever heard without Christ. Verse 5, he says, but after they... Thy hardness and impedient uh, heart uh, treasured up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. That word I want to look at again, impediment, impeditant. Uh, you think about that. And we hear, let me put it in today's term. There's no shame in your game. Is that something to be proud of? Well, that's what he's talking about. These folks were not ashamed of what they were doing. Oh, is that not going on now? When we can allow sitcoms and uh, cartoons and all like that to have same-sex marriage people doing that or having a... Uh, 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 um, me and my, watch, my wife watches Below Deck Med Mediterranean. That's just terrible. You know, I got to think about it. I said, we don't need to watch this. It's, it's just terrible. Because the first thing... What does most people want to know? Let me just ask. Let's see if anybody's in here brave enough to say anything. What do you want to find out if you're going to go somewhere? What is one of the most important things of the world? I ain't talking about a you. I'm the world that they have when you get there. Huh? <laughs> Unfortunately, food's two. Alcohol's number one. They can't have a movie. They can't have it. The first thing them folks get on them yachts and stuff like that, they want to know, can we start drinking now? Can we start doing that now? Can we start doing that? Why do you want to do that? So you'll be out of your mind? So you won't be ashamed? You won't be, in, you know, there's no shame in your game? People are always bragging on says, Boy, when she got drunk, she danced all over the tabletops up there. Now you asked her when she's sober the next morning. I didn't do those things. Yes, you did. Let me see. And sin will take you farther than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and make you pay more than you ever expected and want to pay. Do you want that? You know, I can remember the day that of some, does it ever cross your mind? I don't want you to raise your hand or anything. You ever seen anybody been labeled out, or have you been labeled out that? And when you see somebody that you used to know, or they know you and you know them, they go about, oh, boy. <laughs> Listen, that's what it's talking about. The Bible says, surely your sins will find you out. Let me tell you what, but Jesus Christ can forgive you. He'll cast it into the sea of forgiveness to never remember it no more. Who cares what people think as long as they know that now you profess that Jesus Christ is your Savior and Lord. You may have done some things. You may, I have done some things. You want to know what they are? I ain't telling you because he knows and he said, I forgive you, so don't even ask. Yes, it's funny. It's funny. Some lost people said, preacher, ever drink? Why, Sure. I shouldn't say why, sure. There's people that go through life and didn't do it. Thank God I didn't like it. 
I ain't never been drunk off of my socks, but, you know, I, they said I was a little talkative one time. But other than that, I, you know, I could put in a tea picture of all my life of what I have ever drunk in my life alcohol-wise. I'm glad I never liked it and done it long enough to like it because if it was better than biscuits, I would be a drunk. <laughs> but the thing that is, other than uh, disappointing Jesus Christ, is that you do it because you never liked it the first time. I, I do not know. How can the life of me, somebody, why do you mix a drink? I do know what a screwdriver is, by the way. That comes in flats and Phillips heads. <laughs> Them that are laughing know I was talking about vodka and uh, grapefruit juice, right? Yeah, I do know what one of them. That was one of the things. First of all, I wasn't crazy about grapefruit when I was little. But they said this will help the taste of it. Why drink something? I don't like to take medicine. Why are you going to taste something that you got to put it up? Uh, three quarters of it, uh, Coca-Cola, and then the rest of it, whatever. So to cover it. Why do that? So you want to get to that point where you don't care? Let me tell you, don't do something when you don't care. Ask the man that was driving that killed somebody that done that. Ask the woman that jumped off of a building that did something like that. Ask the woman that cheated on her husband when she lost her mind or her husband with his wife that done those things. Ask it, why did it carry you farther than you want to go? When you got to the point that you couldn't feed your family because that was more important, we got them, y'all got them, we all got them. Look what it does to you. I'm not telling you what you want to hear today, but I'm telling you what you need to hear by the Word of God. And Christians are guilty. But why? But why? We're not going to get there because I'm going to close. A few more verses down. It's going to say these words, and I, I, I'll tell you. That God is going to judge the just and the unjust alike. Did you hear me? The ones that are names written in the book and those that are not. So what does that mean? Well, you say, well, at least we'll be treated fair. Oh, you're going to be treated fair. But he's not going to look over anything that's not under the blood. Okay? He's going to treat you as though you were one of them. You're not getting any special privileges because you never asked him to put, put it under the blood and forgive. How do you know you get true forgiveness? When you quit doing those things you've asked him to help you for, to forgive you. When you quit those things and start living right again. That's hard. We all doing something right now. I guarantee you we all got a little something in our life. I don't know what it is, but we do, I do, and everybody else does. And I don't make it right, but we have to ask for forgiveness for daily. I'm sure ain't nobody in the last week or two just made you mad enough you wanted to, you said kill them, but not really. Just run over them and back up, see what you run over a couple of times. I, maybe something like that. But those thoughts that went through your mind, well, I'm just telling you how serious it is. He says, but Jesus is no respecter of persons. That's why he won't do that. Let me tell you, the ground's level at Calvary. At Calvary, it's level that if you're able to walk and bend down at the cross of Calvary, you ain't got to be a special thing. You just got to be convicted of the Holy Ghost of God and go up there and he is able to forgive you whatever you have done in this life because he is no respect. Aren't you glad? If he was a respecter of persons, what would this be? If he was a respecter of persons, the Gentiles wouldn't have a prayer. We wouldn't have a chance in this life because he did not die for just them. He died for us. He did not just die for his own. He went to his own and his own received him not. So he died and they crucified him outside of the gate. Where they, did, where they done all kinds of people. Actually they went as far as to put out their Jews that they referred to as not being Jews because of what they had done. And Jesus was one of them. But thanks be to God. <laughs> he did it out there. And he died for us out there. And in that tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, and when the, when the ground shook and the roll, stone rolled back from that grave, our king, he come forth. He victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And he is still alive in the well today. And he's still keeping account. Don't hide in the dark from him because he can, he's got an all-seeing eye. He is not, don't have dark vision. He has all-time vision. You hear me? He don't have infrared. His eyes are a flaming fire according to the word of God. He can see all things and I don't care how smart and clever you are with your tongue you cannot outwit God 
the devil's done tried that. He says, you come up here in a weak state. He says, if you'll fall down and worship me, I'll give you all that. And then I mean, I was going almost, devil, you fool. This is mine anyway. Why do I want something that I already have? You're just allowed right now to do what you're doing. Jesus said, listen, depart out and get away from me. One day, and that day is coming. Are you going to be on the cheering side? Listen, my king reigns right now, and he's in the place where I'm going to be. Now, the devil reigns on this earth. He's not in the place he's going to be at this moment, but he will be. And when, the, when Jesus slams the door shuts on the pits of hell and he takes the key that he already has full control of and he locks the door and puts him in the pits forever and ever in eternity, are you going to be locked in there with him? There's one thing that worse than, than can, can imagine being there, being locked up in there with something. I told you the story about my grandpa and when his hat fell off in there and the old wild hog eat up my grandfather's hat. And he was rubbing his head where my neighbor had hit him over the head with a limb trying to beat that hog. And they only knocked my grandpa's hat in there and that sow went there <laughs> tore that hat up. And my daddy looked over and says, Daddy, he says, what is it, son? He says, at least you didn't go in with your hat. Listen. Some people think that they're going to make it to heaven, that they didn't quite get to go with that. Let me tell you, the Bible says your sins will find you out. Make sure of your call and election. If you want to know if you got forgiveness and then when you've had a change in your heart and your walk's different and your talk's different, don't judge. Listen, don't judge other people by the way they're doing. If you want, some, if you want an example, his name's Jesus, okay? He was tempted of all walks of life. Anything that can come in your mind, he was tempted of, and he overcome it. He took on flesh so that he could prove that it could be done. He gave us a way out. He gave us the Spirit of God to live with those that accept him. Not only that, he said, I will forgive you if you'll come unto me, all that you labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will take your yoke upon me. Give it to him today. Let's get out of here. Father, surely under the sound of my voice, God, and in my own heart, God, I, I want to ask before thy people, God, forgive me, for I am a wretched man. And God, I know that you know all things. But God, maybe today we need to do business with you. We need to change our direction. I know we're saved. I know some's not saved. God, I, I know and you know. But God, we need to make sure if we was to leave this world, we don't want to spend eternity in that state. We don't want to stand before you when we knew better. God, let us have a closer walk with you. Lord, let us begin our new walk with you today if we don't know you. God, there's lost people everywhere. God, there's people that profaned, profess to be Christians and are not. And God, you're going to treat us all the same. Let us examine ourselves. Lord, bring us back into the fold. Our altars will be open that they can come do business with you, Father. Lord, let us not cast the first stone because we do have sin in our lives. But God, let us make our own selves right before you. In Jesus' name, amen.
I'll tell you how it could happen. It's so good. When you realize the love that you have for him and he has for you, sometimes you bust out in, in tears. I was marrying a couple one time, and when he spotted his bride, first of all, he was glad she showed up. But he loved her so, and he wanted it to happen so. As I was standing there, that man began to cry because the one that he had fell in love with was going to commit to him. Listen, when I committed my soul to Jesus Christ, I did the same thing. He is the love of my life. If anybody don't deserve for him to love, it's me. But I know he does. And I want you to know, he can be the love of your life. My fleshly love of my life is my wife. And she's blessed me with a bunch of little angels around me. But my Savior did it before I even asked him. He is the love of my life. Make him your love today. I pray that you do. Amen. Father, God, as we sung that song, surely the presence, and it is, it's here. God, I know if I open these doors and people get out, that the Spirit of God, they'll push it away and the devil will jump on them. God, I pray right now before they leave, God, that they would surrender. But, God, if they don't, I pray, Lord, that you would just keep being right by them as a perfect gentleman. And, God, you knock on their heart's door and you remind them that you died for them and you love them like no one else could. God, bless our, our group that's going to field trip today. God, I, bless, I pray you bless it. And I, I pray you bless the food they're going to eat when they get over there. But, God, bring them back to us. Let them have true fellowship one with another. But God truly represents you in a Christian way. We love you and we thank you. And all God's people said, amen.